guys, welcome to the vlog. So, why do a lot of web projects fail? This is something that uh, I've noticed since the 1990s, but you're going to see, especially if you're freelancing, a lot of projects for small businesses end up kind of floating around in uh, nowhere, nowhere land once you've deployed it. One of the common complaints that I've heard from freelancers happened to me as well is that you do all kinds of work, you put out a beautiful website or you put out a beautiful web app and then you link to it in your portfolio from your own website and next thing you know, bing, bing, boom, the client, instead of calling you up to make updates, they try to tweak it themselves or they hire their, their kid. They get their kid to come in there and to try and fix it and they mess it up and in a short period of time, the site looks terrible. Um, why does this happen? I think a lot of people who jump into the game of uh, building a site or building an app, a web app, any app, they don't realize how much work it really is to refine your product to get it to the point where it's really ready for market. What you're going to find when you actually develop software, whether it be a web app or any traditional app, typically version one is kind of like your beta. Even though you may release it as a full release version one, it's really a beta. That's why you see Windows has Windows 10, iOS has iOS 10, Android, I don't know what level of Android they're at now. The version one of any piece of software or any site is typically just that, just the first iteration, your first stab at uh, what the project will end up being. So case in point, is Studio Web. Studio Web is my learning SaaS. I designed the prototype in 2011 and put it together with my team. And since then, we've gone through many, many iterations, many updates, many changes to the core app itself. Not on top of the fact we you have to keep the courses up to date. Brand new courses were put together, etc. But the app itself. You know, when we get it out there and people start using it, you start getting feedback, then you start really learning what your app, your web app, or your app is going to have to do. This is very standard. You have to budget that in to a project. You have to expect that you're going to have to make changes once you get it live, once you get people using the application. So Studio Web itself is at version 4 now, and version 4 is really solid eight years later. It really is. We've had well over a million students on there, thousands of schools, and over that time, I've refined it, cleaned it up, added features, removed features, uh, fixed the, user, the UX, and we're about to release the full version. Probably it's, it's a level four now, we're at version four now. I think the new version is gonna be like a 4.1 or 4.2. Uh, because we're reskinning it now with file skins, doing some tweaks in terms of the UX and so on. This is just common. This is just common. So yeah, many apps, not just web apps, many apps you're going to find, the first version is just the beginning. And when a lot of small business owners realize that they're going to have to invest much more into the project, a lot of them will drop the project at that point in time. I've seen it many, many times. I've had clients who spent 50 grand, 100 grand on a project, and they get it out there, and it's starting to get some traction, but they're not willing to put more into it. So the system kind of uh, sleeps and slowly fades and dies away. Very common. You see with huge sites, like for example, you see it with the, the relaunch of MySpace, and they reskinned it and did all kinds of stuff to it. And in my opinion, though visually it's pretty, MySpace. It's usability-wise, it's terrible. They made some fundamental mistakes of uh, usability mistakes. It's incredible. They spent, I'm sure, millions and millions updating it, and they made these noob mistakes in terms of user experience. Now, I'm going to go off on a tangent here for beginners. There's a big difference between UI, user interface, and user experience. UI is the visual look of it, how aesthetically pleasing it is. UX is user experience, it's how easy it is to use. They are not the same, they can be tied together, but they're not the same. So I'll give you an example, look at Google. Now, in terms of UI, it doesn't get any more boring than that. Yeah, my Google phone went off. In terms of UI, 
user interface, the Google website is, is as boring as it gets, right? Look at Craigslist, the same thing, as boring, you know, Craigslist kind of a throwback to 1990s web design. Whereas, uh, so its design is boring, but its user experience is simple and easy, so it's very effective. They're both very, very successful, successful websites. On the other hand, you look at MySpace, uh, very, very, last time I checked anyway, very nice design, the new MySpace, very nice design, aesthetically very pleasing, nice UI, but the user experience is terrible. It's really bad, and as a result, that's part of the reason anyway, it sinks. The ultimate sites have a both beautiful UI and very nice, uh, very good usability. Usability, though, in my opinion, is more important than UI. Anyhow, so with Studio Web, this ongoing learning app, it uh, the U the UI and the UX have stood the, has stood the test of time. The UI is looking a little bit dated, although nobody's ever complained about it, but we're coming up with a brand new UI that fits the modern look that's going to be out soon. But we're not changing the UX because the UX, the user experience, is something we, refi we refined over the years. So it works really, really well. So we're not touching that at all because uh, the beautiful thing about that UI, that UX, the Studio Web UX, that allowed people to just start using the course and, then, and there's no thinking. You know, there's a classic book from that goes back to the 90s. I think mean, there's a couple of editions. It's called Don't Make Me Think. It's one of the early books in terms of web usability. And uh, yeah, so when people come to Studio Web, and that's one of the big po selling points, is that they don't have to think about it. They go, oh, okay, boom, boom, boom. We're doing the course. We're doing all kinds of stuff. They're doing all kinds of uh, advanced code training. And, so, and, and, and software and programming training, and they don't have to think about the user experience. You know, how does this work? It, it, it's literally a no-brainer. So the user experience of the Studio Web software, the Studio Web SaaS software as a service, doesn't get in the way of the purpose of the software. It doesn't get in the way of the training. So back to the original point of this video, yes, you're going to find, especially as a freelancer, you're dealing with small, medium-sized businesses, a lot of projects end up going nowhere. Get, end up going nowhere. That's why in my freelance course I talk about the payment, the payment, the payment method that's most effective. The 33 split, which maximizes the amount of money you get as quickly as possible. Because you never know what will happen. You never know what happened uh, when uh, when small entrepreneurs, maybe inexperienced entrepreneurs they start realizing the true cost of building a web app or a very functional website from scratch. As an example, I've mentioned this before, friends of mine, they have a, a travel business and they do a few million bucks a year in sales and it's all run off of a website and it's a WordPress-based site and they spend like, I think it was like a year or so, I don't, I don't remember the exact time, f just finding people who could do the job properly, that WordPress specialist. And I think what did, I think what their budget was twenty or thirty thousand dollars to redo a WordPress site, because it was crucial to their business that this WordPress site looked really really good, and had the elements in place. And you know, reskinning a WordPress site is not exactly a rocket scientist, but let me tell you. And as I said, if you're into freelancing, you want to print money, get into WordPress, become a WordPress professional. There's a lot of opportunity there, a lot of opportunity. Very few businesses need you to build the next studio web or the, the next uh, Facebook or social network from scratch. I'm not saying studio web is that complex, but you know, you get the point. Most small businesses need simple implementations, a WordPress site, uh, implement uh, their uh, point and click website builder, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, there you go. So yeah, you're gonna find that a lot of web projects end up just uh, disappearing or slowly fading. The original title, I said, why do 90% uh, of web development projects fail? 90%, maybe that's an exaggeration, but maybe over time, that's pretty much what happens. Remember, in business, 80% or so of businesses fail within the first couple of years. So it stands to reason, stands to reason a lot of web projects will fail as well. That's not uh, negative in any way in terms of uh, software developers. It's just the nature of business. Anyway, 
There's a bunch of little tips in there. I think you'll get some value out of it. That's it for now. Bye-bye.